Welcome back to the channel. Mercy Brand Tez coming at you, M U R A C M O N T E Z. And as always, we talk about travel nursing, healthcare, all things medical, physical, fitness. So today, we're going to take a more of a, a healthier route, talking about fitness or just talking about staying in shape. Check it out. All right, so everywhere I go, just about places I work, I get a lot of questions. They're asking me, you know, do I work out, right? Uh, what do I do? What do I eat? How do I stay in shape? How do I not gain weight? How do I uh, not lose weight? Hold on, let me get closer. And I've got two things you can do. So one thing you can do is intermittent fasting, Another thing you can do is being at a caloric deficit. All right. So first off, we're gonna talk about intermittent fasting. What is that? So it's basically just as it sounds, intermittent fasting, uh, on and off. Basically, you're gonna eat at a certain period, and you're gonna eat later on that day at a certain period. And then the rest of that day, you're not gonna eat. You're gonna allow your body to fast. All right, so it's two things or two things you want to think about is the different times you're going to eat and what you need to eat. All right, so studies show that you can do an eight hour intermittent fasting time span. You can also do a 12 hour intermittent fasting time span. So for example, you may wake up and you may eat some breakfast at 7 a.m. And then you may go to work, you may come home, and you may have dinner or whatever you decide to eat at 7 p.m. But then after that, you don't eat anymore. So you're basically fasting into the next 7 a.m. Uh, time frame. So when you, when you look at it, that's 7 to 12 is 5 hours, and then 12 to 7. So you're basically fasting for 12 hours. So you're having a 12-hour time period where you're going to eat, and you're having a 12-hour time period where you're fasting. So what's supposed to happen, this is supposed to increase your metabolism. It's supposed to allow your body to break down the fatty acid that you're eating. It's supposed to improve your blood pressure, improve your, um, maybe not improve, but reduce the amount of fat that's stored in your body and so forth. So it's gonna increase your overall health. All right, so that's one scenario. Another scenario is you could do, uh, you can eat at 7 a.m. for breakfast and then you have that seven to three times period where you're eating. So your last hour that you can eat from, from two to three. And so after that, you wouldn't eat anymore. So you have from three to 12, you've got nine hours there. And then you have from 12 to seven, you got seven hours there. So you basically are fasting for a 16 hour period. Sorry, just don't have my head, just, just making sure. I wanna make sure everything's accurate. So now you have a longer period to fast. Studies show that the eight hour period that you would do is more effective than doing a 12 hour period. Now, why is that? Because you're finishing your meals for the day in an earlier period of time, which means that you're allowing your body to have more time to break down what you ate, as long as you're continuing to remain uh, active throughout the day. So if you stop at three, you gotta think about it. You're gonna be up and moving around for about three to nine, if you're an early bird, you know, you probably go to sleep like nine to 10. So from three to 10, that's seven hours of activity that you're, that you've got going on, that you're doing something. So as you're doing something, your body is having, a, or you're giving your, allowing your body time to digest and burn what you just ate. So that's, what's well, one thing. You can intermittent fast, and you know, it's not for everybody. Everybody can't fast, everybody, doesn't like that time frame, but if you don't like the seven to three or you don't like the seven to seven, you can also do 10 to six, which is the same as the seven to three, but it's just time frames. Basically, um, what if you do your research about intermittent fasting, you'll learn that sometimes it's not so much as the idea of fasting that gets you, it's just the times that you choose to fast. So maybe you could do 10 to six, maybe you could do seven to three, maybe you could do seven to seven. Find something that works for you when it comes to fasting and it should help. Now, granted, is fasting any different than maybe eating less and less each day? Not exactly, so you could do that, but fasting is just another way to do it. Now, you could do uh, eat less a day or eat less each day, 
and that will work too. It's about just the same as fasting, but it, it just comes down to what you think that you can do. And if fasting isn't the thing for you, maybe a caloric deficit is the thing for you. Now, what is a caloric deficit? Well, caloric comes from, well, calories. Think about that. You're choosing to eat less calories, right? And if we're just for the sake of not being too uh, technical, not being too specific, you could use 2,000 calories as the amount of calories you're supposed to have each day. Now, if that's the case, what you don't want to do is take in as much calories as that or take in more calories as that because then that defeats the purpose of what you're trying to do. Because you got to remember, being at a caloric deficit means that you're going to have you're gonna eat less than 2,000 2, calories a day, right? So that you can lose that weight or so that you can maintain. Now, what happens when you are at a caloric deficit, when you're not taking in that many calories? Well, first of all, you gotta think about what calories turn into. It's sugar, right? Store it as fat, right? And so, you think about your pancreas. Pancreas create insulin. Insulin is what you need to in, take in the sugar. And then the sugar is stored in your fatty cells. So if you're eating too much, if you're taking in too many calories, you're taking in too much, too much sugar, well then all that is gonna get stored in your fat cells and you're just gonna keep gaining weight, right? But if you are at a caloric deficit, that means you allow your body to use the fatty acids that you already have stored or the sugars that you have stored in your fat acids. You're allowing your body to use that instead of using the new calories that you intake. Because if you think about it, if you're, con if you're continuously taking in more and more calories each day, it's just getting stored. Like you're, you're not giving your body a chance to burn the fat that was already stored from yesterday or the fat that was already stored, stored from earlier today. So being at a caloric deficit can definitely help you. But what you're going to have to do is make sure that you count in the calories that you eat. Because if you're gonna only allot yourself 2,000 calories or less, preferably less than 2,000 calories, you need to count, right? So what that entails is that you need to probably come up with a list of things that you can, that you eat, and you need to, you know, do your math and decide and come up with, you know, how much, how many calories there are. So if you're gonna eat chips, which I prefer you don't do, but you can count the calories and just make sure that you don't go over the amount you, you're allotted yourself that day, which is gonna be 2,000 calories, all right? So you can eat snacks. You just have to make sure that you put it into your diet. Now, what I suggest you do, uh, an easy way to keep up with this is to get you an app that can do it for you. So basically all you gotta do is put in what you ate, put in the amount of calories you've eaten, and then it counts it up so that you can keep track of it a little easier. Now, so what I wanna do is I just wanna show you something that I've got in the fridge that is very healthy. And that's just one of my meals for the day. Like I haven't, this is my first meal of the day. So in a sense, I have fasted. It's, it's 12 and I'm just not eating, right? I probably won't eat again until later tonight. So, hey, it works for me. It can work for you. But, oh, let me show you real quick. It has to be warmed up first, but it's very good. All right, so we have right out of, we have the rice, right? And we have a mixture of things. So it's like a seafood stir fry kind of thing. And one of the good things that you want to think about is making sure that you're taking a lot of protein. And so why I eat a lot of seafood is because seafood has a lot of protein, it's very healthy, and it's easier for your body to digest than first than you know beef or something like that. Something that takes a while for your body to digest, but yeah, it can still be good for you. It just depends on how much you take in. So we have rice, we've got shrimp. We've got broccoli, we've got some onions and some peppers, right? And so you add all this up and you decide how many calories it is. And this is only one minute for me today. I do plan on going to the gym today, which means that I'm probably gonna burn all this because when I go to the gym, I will either play basketball, I either get on the treadmill, or I may do a little hit training, you know, high end interval training to help burn a lot faster. And when you do the hit training, you generally will, you generally will burn for over a 24 hour period, even if you're not working out. But that's another thing we're getting to. So I try to burn at least a thousand calories when I do go, which means that all this will be gone, which means that now I have more room to eat another meal later on today and it not affect me. So I'll maintain my weight.
depending on how much I burn or how lower in weight. So these are just a couple of things that you could think about that you could probably try in your own uh, diet or in your own schedule or routine that you have. You know, try a little intermittent fasting. You don't have to do it every day. You know, start off with doing it uh, once a week, then increase it to two, three, four, five, you know, whatever would work for you and just see where, where it takes your body. Then not only in the intermittent fasting, try the caloric deficit, you know, only eating up to 2,000 calories, and then anything after that, you know, you don't want to eat. You want to just stop right there. So in a sense, maybe you are fasting at the same time. But being at a caloric deficit may be a little easier than fasting because some people think about the fact that they're not going to be eating. How can I do this? But it's very doable, I tell you. And it's a lot easier to do if you fill your time with other things. So, so to speak, if you're at work, you may eat breakfast, then you might not eat, eat again until you get off, right? Or... Um, let's just say that you are, you know, going to the gym. You want to definitely make sure that you take in some protein before you go. And then after you're done, you might want to wait a little bit. But by the time you do eat again, you're going to be very hungry. But that could be the two times that you eat. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to give you scenarios of different time frames or things that you can do to kind of fill up the time if fasting is the problem so that you're not necessarily thinking about the idea of not eating food. Right? Because food is just there to help sustain your body. At the end of the day, how much food you eat is 100% uh, of you. Like you don't have to have as much food as you think you have to have. But you have to have the right food if you want to lose weight, if you want to slim down, if you want to lean up. It's definitely a mental thing. But I think that everybody is capable of. It just depends on how much you want to lose weight, how much do you want to trim down, how much, you no, know, how bad do you want to lose weight or how bad do you want to trim down? I think that sounds a lot better. And how bad do you want to be in the best physical shape that you can be? Now, I, for one, have been maintaining my weight from about 220 to 225. Preferably, that's not where I want to be. Where I want to be is back in the 100s. So I've got about a good 20 pounds, 25 pounds to lose, which I'm going to do, which I'm currently doing when I leave the gym today, I'll probably be down to 223, 222, depending on what I do. And then I'm just gonna keep shipping off from there. And I'll keep you guys updated with my success. And if you want to, you know, you can leave a comment in my on my channel, a comment in the DMs, let me know how you're doing with those two um, routines, with those two programs that you can implement into your own routines. So that's pretty much it for this, this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Please don't forget that. As a matter of fact, comment if you can. And if you don't like the video, if you feel like this video didn't help you in any way, just like it. Even though I prefer you to like it. And anyhow, don't forget, show love to the channel. I show love to yours. And just spread the love all around.